One of my favorite things to do is to do ink washes with just straight gray ink. It's kind of like watercolor without the color. And on the uh, easel today, this is not an easel, it's actually a tabletop, is an anglerfish. And I have done a lot of anglerfish um, paintings. And this uh, work looks really cartoony, but I actually have a reference photo just off the top of the page that I'm using because I want it to look semi-realistic and get the shading down just right. So um, anglerfish, they're fun because they look like monsters, but they're real. Uh, they have really big, big teeth and lots and lots of scales and lots of uh, uh, fun parts, squiggly parts and to, to draw. So right now I am doing the basic outline of the fish. Um, the fun part comes up a little bit later, so you gotta stick with me because um, the ink wash, it, it's, I love the way it looks. When it dries, it looks so cool. Um, it, it's kind of like the watercolor I said without the color. So um, right now I'm just putting in the body shape. But since I got 10 minutes of time to fill here, I'm gonna give you a little anglerfish um, uh, facts here. All anglerfish are carnivorous and are thus adapted for the capture of prey. Ranging in color from dark gray to dark brown, deep sea species have large heads that bear enormous crescent-shaped mouths, full of long fang-like teeth angled inward for efficient prey grabbing. Their length can vary from 2 to 18 centimeters, with a few types getting as large as 100 centimeters. But this variation is largely due to sexual dimorphism with females being much larger than males. Uh, frogfish and other shallow water anglerfish species are ambush predators and often appear camouflaged as rocks, sponges, or seaweed. So there are some facts for you. Um, get back to the video here. Right now, um, I'm doing my first round of shading with the side of the pencil, which I will add to much more when I get to the, to the ink. I use um, straight up uh, India ink, um, and I bought myself this little tray. I can put drops of it in there, um, so I can get different sh darknesses. Um, I wasn't going for very dark here. My goal was just to do some light shading. Uh, towards the end, it got a little bit dark, but it wasn't too bad. I was actually very happy with the way this turned out. Um, with the, with the facts that I just read to you, the teeth uh, make for a very fun design. I don't know if design is the right word to use there, but the big old googly eyes and those big old teeth, it, it's just a fun, fun uh, subject matter to do. Um, I've done at least three full-size paintings um, with different types of um, anglerfish. What's nice about this, when you're doing fantasy artwork like I do, once you have the basic design down, you can have all kinds of fun uh, with colors and designs and, and you make it your own. Um, it's, it's great for kids, I guess. I don't know. I love them. I got one hanging by my front door. Um, it's probably not the kind of painting your grandma's going to put in the living room next to her couch, which is unfortunate because I think it'd be a great place to put in your grandma's house next to the couch. But grandmas don't tend to like uh, pictures of ugly flowers and, and ugly flowers. And I don't do flowers because, I don't know, it's just boring to me. Um, I, I've, I've, in the past and on this page, I've done some subjects that I thought I would, that would appeal to a larger crowd. I got some chickens once. It's actually a pretty darn good video. If I was you, I, if I can possibly tag that, that video here, I'm going to put it on. But um, we went to the fair and took some pictures of some chickens. And, the, you know, they're exotic chickens. They're not that regular white KFC chickens. And I brought it home and I scanned it and I, I did... Um, chicken painting and it wasn't too bad you know I feel like I'm pandering when I you know choose subjects like that because it's not something I would really be invested in but I kind of made it my own and I used some painting techniques that I thought was kind of cool uh, what's neat about this uh, coming up here pretty quick is I really like the brush and this whole series is supposed to be just me doing pencil stuff but um, I even went to the store and bought myself another set of watercolors so I could do some watercoloring here which is getting me back into painting again I probably will, but I need to do some more some more sketching because uh, the, the more sketching I do, the more, more practice I get into, the better I get at my overall designs. 
and you can see right here I am just adding the darkness on the creases where, where two edges come together I just go over the top because th th when you have two edges and I'm gonna learn you something here when you are shading where two things come together it's dark it's like a, it's like a valley a little cavern and that's and it's dark on both sides I remember when I was a kid and I used to shade I'd only shade one side and, I, and one day it kind of dawned on me that you have to do both and my, my work has been much better ever since so right now I'm using about I don't know 30 percent gray uh, it's not too dark uh, it's not too light it's just about perfect um, a little bit later I dip into another tray I, I did one tray of one drop one tray of two drops and then if you look at that I spilled it a little bit so um, it, when you're doing these ink washes uh, if you go over it even with the same color twice it kind of darkens it down too it's kind of a little trick um, on the eye there I did a little trick too I did the dark thing in, not on the edge but kind of close to the edge to give it the impression there was a highlight coming from the bottom um, realistically in, in an uh, aquatic area you're not going to have sunshine underneath but maybe it was maybe the light was bouncing off of his jaw or maybe there's a UFO or a Sasquatch or something down below with a, with a flashlight I don't know but uh, it makes for a good highlight so you can see here I, I, this one, I must have double dipped into the dark so I'm getting a little bit darker here get, get a little bit more brave I didn't want to go too dark and I thought that might ruin it um, I think right now I'm about a 40 45 percent gray tone which is about perfect uh, perfect of course it's perfect it's my, it's my work of art it's perfect so now I am kind of uh, using a very th uh, thin blade uh, brush to, to kind of get the teeth in getting some shadows on the teeth and what am I doing here I am going in there with that thin brush and I am uh, highlighting well I'm not highlighting I'm doing the opposite of highlighting it's, it's funny because when I paint um, I'm often highlighting things but here I'm going backwards I'm actually shading getting some darker lines in here for some more definition um, the, the the paper is wet in some areas so it's kind of blending that's for a neat little effect um, you can do both you know paint on the dry paint on the wet when it's on the wet it, it kind of spreads out a little bit and gives it a softer feel um, sometimes I'm doing this you know once I get my gray tones in I'll come in with a, with a black uh, sharp marker and really get some um, definition on certain parts um, I put the scales in with pencil and I don't know if I just lose all those scales under the dark but I can still I can still see some I think it looks good it gives it a lot of good texture and texture means everything um, I, I work on texture quite a bit um, scales bumps all kinds of little fun things any, any kind of fun doodad you can put in there uh, just adds to the interest in your painting um, in this one I put on the fins I put like I don't know how to describe it like little chunks coming off the fins scales floating in the water it just kind of looks cool what am I doing here I'm putting some more fun stuff in the eyeballs so it's not just a big blank eye um, and I use a different couple different tones there so it wasn't just one uh, this is one thing I learned in my mad magazine days because my favorite artists always did a lot of ink washes and I just ate that up and I just stole it stole it stole it and I love it I love it um, this is my my thing right here so I'm putting a little a couple more darks I'm putting a dark around that little, little area there now I'm going under the belly adding a few more uh, I, I hate to say the word highlights it's shadows technically but it's like it's like opposite of the highlights here I'm putting in some some texture this fish in the picture had these little bumps in the bottom so I'm not just making those things up those were actually were there um, kind of defining the scales a little bit more there and the jaw, well that's actually not a jawline technically that's a, a gill so I wanted to put some interest in the background so I thought you know maybe I'll put a little bit of uh, some leaves and some stems so it looks like he's in a marsh or something um, hunting down that fish and so I'm doing some basic blocking in of different tones um, and some stems a lot of my paintings I do the same thing only sort of gray tones those would be in green and the background would be blue um, it's kind of weird it's like taking a black and white picture of one of my colored paintings but um, I'm trying something different you know I want to do the, the ink washes because I really like the way it looks 
in one of these days, if you guys keep following me and whatnot, I will do some some watercolors um, added in there. Um, so like and subscribe and share and like and subscribe and, and some share some more. Um, I'm putting in some more leaves in the bottom, looks like. And this thing's about done. Uh, don't hang up yet. And thank you very much.